Hi, I am Abhinandan, a PhD student from IIT Kanpur, and today I will present how to prepare classical mechanics in CSI and NET exam. And through this video, you'll find a strategy using which you can go through minimum number of important topics, but still you can score maximum in the exam. So let's begin with the strategy. First is that we need to know why classical mechanics is important and or, or what is the percentage that classical mechanics contributes in this net exam. So let's go through how, what are the question patterns and how many question comes in each question pattern. So in net, we know we have a 3.5 marks question section and there is five marks question section. One is B, another is C in the your paper. And now let's see in each section, how many questions that may come from classical mechanics. So from the past uh, few years question analysis, I found that at least two to three questions you can expect from each five and 3.5 marks section. And that gives you 17 to 25 marks within that range from classical mechanics. And it at least contributes 22 to 30% of your cutoff. So on an average, I can expect 25% will contribute to your cutoff. That is like the one fourth of your cutoff. So if you are done with classical mechanics, you can cover one fourth of your cutoff, which is, that means this classical mechanics is another very important subject. But you must wonder, this classical mechanics syllabus is pretty broad because we have started reading it from class 11 or maybe before that. And we read it up to MSc level. So we have covered a huge amount of stuffs. So by reading all those huge amount of stuffs or going through this ample amount of syllabus, how it is not worthy to cover only 17 marks. I agree on that part. And for that, I have come up with a strategy using which you will go through minimum number of topics and still you are able to cover 70 to 80% in the exam. And if you follow this strategy, I'll give you four topics. And if you go through four topics, that will give you at least 70% in your classical mechanics. So let's begin with those topics. First topic is Lagrangian and Hamiltonian. So how you figure out Lagrangian and Hamiltonian for a system or uh, questions related to that is very important in the context of net. And you can see at least we can expect uh, two questions or one questions from, from this uh, Lagrangian Hamiltonian, the 3.5 and one question definitely from five marks section. So that, that makes it very heavy that it contributes a lot because one five marks to confirm another on an average, you can expect another 3.5 for from this. And that makes it almost 8.5 in the exam out of how much we expect some 2025. So it contributes 8.5. So it's like around like one third. And now look at what are the important questions that I, or what are the type of questions that you can expect in the exam? So I have taken few questions from the past year question papers, just to give you the variety. So one type of question is they may give you some potential and ask you to find what is the constant of motion or give you something and ask you to find which quantity repre represents the constant of motion. So this can be one very important question. Another very important question is, they have given you Hamiltonian, you need to figure out Lagrangian or maybe the vice versa. They may give you the Lagrangian, figure out the Hamiltonian. So this type of question is very important for any exam uh, where classical mechanics is there. Last, another variety of question is, they have given a potential and the particle moves under that potential 
you need to draw the face face diagram means the how the face face diagram means momentum versus position so you need to plot momentum as a function of position for those uh, systems so these are three types of question another type of question can be which i didn't put it here they may give you some system and ask you to figure out what is the equation of motion of that system in that case you can use lagrangian or hamiltonian to figure out equation of motion of the system or they may ask you for that system find the hamiltonian or lagrangian so these are the varieties of questions that you need to cover to score maxima to score or to maximize your chances in this particular lagrangian hamiltonian topic so let's move on to the next one next one is the central force and in that we can expect at least one question from 3.5 and more likely another question from five mark sections and that makes it like around 8 3.5 to 8 but at least you will get one 3.5 and now let's see what type of questions that you may get so this is the uh, question where a particle is moving under some potential and you need to find the trajectory of the particle so that is very important question from central force there, there can be different type of potential and they ask you for this potential what is the trajectory so that one needs to know how to figure that out another thing here particle is moving under some potential and it is moving in an elliptical orbit so you know the trajectory now you need to figure out what is the maximum kinetic energy the particle can have so this is another type now here the particle is moving in a circular orbit under this potential given and we need to figure out what is the time period for a given radius it is given t1 for another radius what is the time period t2 in, you need to figure out in terms of t1 maybe so these are the different type of questions so there can be other type of questions like a particle is moving in an orbit now you give some perturbation to that particle so will this orbit remain stable or not so this type of questions are also there so this is a very important topic and very interesting topic in classical mechanics so we need to go through in details so that we can cover or we can learn most of the things from the topic and as a result we can score maximum in this area the next one is a small oscillations so from small oscillations you'll get a at least one questions in 3.5 that is confirmed most of the time one question will get from 3.5 and sometimes you may get one question in the five mark sections so in that sense it is very confirmed that one at least you'll get one question and for 3.5 these are the type of questions that most of the time appears that uh, you have given a lagrangian this is a lagrangian or you they may or they may give you some potential so the particle under this potential or this lagrangian you need to figure out what is the frequency of oscillation about the equilibrium point similarly for the other one also here they are rotated in terms of normal modes so this is a very common question from the central uh, sorry from the uh, small oscillations topic so you need to know how to solve these problems and that is and this type of problems most of the time comes in any exam and this type type of problems you can expect in the 3.5 marks section other problem is so this is the this is another problem which came in the 5 marks so here the mass m1 is rotating in a circular orbit and it is connected to m2 through a thread now if you give some uh, uh, perturbation to m1 and it starts oscillating in the radial direction then what is the frequency of oscillations so that you need to know so these are the type of questions that you can expect in small oscillations there may be many other they may give you a two spring system or three spring system and they may ask you what is the normal mode of 
oscillation or normal mode frequencies for that. So they may give you some system which is oscillating. They may ask you coupled system, sorry, which is oscillating and they may ask you what is the normal mode frequencies. So that type of question you can expect in small oscillations. And now I'll go to my last most important topic is the canonical transformation. And this is very important because you can expect one question from in the five mark sections, which will give you a huge boost. So minimum one question from five mark sections and sometime you can expect one question in the 3.5 also, which makes it like a kind of 8.5 kind of chapter, five to 8.5. And what are the questions that you can expect? So in canonical transformation, one common thing is that question based on Poisson bracket. So just go and learn what is Poisson bracket. If the most important thing in the canonical transformation, it is the questions from Poisson bracket. So this is one question where they didn't mention the Poisson bracket, but you need to use the Poisson bracket relation. They are saying this X and P are the generalized coordinates and these are the new capital X and capital P are the new coordinates which they obtain through canonical transformation and these are the capital X and capital P related to the previous variables small x and small p by this relation. Now you need to know if the earlier variables and the new variables are related to canonical transformation then what is the value of this alpha, beta and maybe gamma. So this is a question they are asking. Basically it is uh, telling that if X capital X capital P are canonically transformed from small x small p, then what is the value of this gamma, beta, alpha, all those things. And if two sets of variables are related by canonical transformation, then their Poisson bracket is actually one. So you need to use that information and figure out the solution of this problem. So here you will get a Poisson bracket. Maybe it's an indirect way of getting Poisson bracket, but it's a Poisson bracket based problem. Another problem is that canonical transformation is given, then you have given a Hamiltonian and also given a generating function for this uh, transformation. And you need to figure out the equation of motion. So these are the type of problems. Now they may ask you the reverse of it. They may give you the equation of motion May also maybe the Hamiltonian and ask you what is the generating function means what is this f this time they have given the f there may be questions where they may ask you to figure out what is f so you need to learn all those tricks and techniques to figure out how to solve these problems so these are the most important four topics that I have presented and if you go through them you can score maximum from the in the in the exam sorry you can score maximum in the exam now I'll go through the last topic, which is like the, what can be the other topics from that you can expect one odd question in the exam, which may be of 3.5. So I have gone through the different papers and I find sometimes you may expect some question from rotating frame or accelerating frame. Sometimes you may expect some question from rigid body or rotational dynamics or find the moment of inertia for a system. And also I found two times that questions came from collision. So these are the topics that we didn't cover that thoroughly, but they may also contribute one question. Any one of this may contribute one question. So my suggestion is that first go through those four topics, solve them as rigorously as you can. And then if you get time, then you can cover one or two of them. If you have time, then only. But first four, cover all those first cover all those four because they contribute maximum to your exam. Now I'll move to the book suggestion. So before suggesting any books, I feel in classical mechanics, at least in the context of net or gate exam, we need to know how to solve problems and developing the problem solving skills is very important. So, and in classical mechanics, we have a variety of books, but still I, try to suggest some books which I feel comfortable up to some extent. So, and if you go through these books, they will cover most of the things. So first book is the Goldstein, definitely it's the classic book in this subject. 
So in Goldstein, you'll find concepts given very nicely as well as you'll find a lot of exercise problems. So, but you will not find any uh, example problems. And also some people complain that Goldstein, understanding Goldstein is very difficult. I agree with that. So if you find it difficult, you can move to some other book. One is the uh, Classical Mechanics Taylor book. This one, another is the Klapner book. So if you find Goldstein difficult, then you can go through those books. Those books are relatively simple. And they have given a little bit few one or two examples also from each topic. But mostly this type of books carry no example type like they don't give you a vast number of examples. Mostly you'll find problems only at the exercise. These are very good for developing concepts. So but but if you feel like, OK, I'm not able to solve problems, I'm not getting confidence to solve problems here, enough problems are not given enough examples are not given okay good for only reading concepts but i'm not able to solve problems if you have that difficulty then i'll suggest some other books one book is like this one here you'll find huge number of problems that has been solved and also you can go through indian author classical mechanics book where you will find some concepts although uh, this this type of books has presented in a much better way than this type of books, than this J.C. Upadhyay book. But in the Indian author book, you will get a lot of problems solved. And if you go through them, and if you can understand them, then that will give you a lot of confidence if you are like lacking of the confidence of solving problems. So you can also go through Indian author books. And by going through Indian author books, if you find comfortable, and if you find it is serving your purpose, then you can also follow Indian author book. So there is nothing specific that you need to follow this book or that book. The most important part is that you need to solve those four topics. And if you can solve it, that will maximize your chances. And that you can go through any type of books. Here I have suggested few books that I followed up to some extent. So that's it. And now I want to summarize. In summary, what you have learned, we have gone through Lagrangian Hamiltonian. And if I convert those numbers into percentage, it contributes almost 20 to 40 percent in the net exam. Central force with this percent, small oscillation 15, but I took 15 percent because I expect one question from 3.5 and canonical transformation of this amount. Now, if I add all of them, I expect at least 70 percent you will get. You can score by reading only these four topics. You don't need to go anywhere else. If you read only these four topics, at least you can score 70%. That shows from the previous data analysis. So just go through these four topics that will maximize your chances. By going through minimum, you can score maximum. And these are the only four which contributes the most. And if you have time, then go or explore the outside topics also. But please first go through this four because this will give you at least 70%. Maybe you, sometimes you get 100% or if not on an average, you may get 80%. So, so this makes it very important. And if you go, score 80%, then it is like almost like I think one fifth, you will cover almost one fifth of your cutoff or maybe more than that of your cutoff. So if you like this strategy, please share this video and please subscribe and if you have any questions any doubts regarding this video or this presentation please write it in the comment section thank you for your attention